Okay, the next thing that people are really quite interested in, Penny, is um, what kinds of tests they might expect to have done on, on either a regular basis or intermittent basis. If you could tell us a bit more about that. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so um, we carry out a variety of tests. So we sometimes do blood tests. We often measure, uh, look at people's kidney function and their liver function in blood tests. Um, and we will sometimes do urine test to look at the activity of the porphyria with a urine PBG, a porphyrobilinogen. Um, and in some patients, we want to do ultrasound scans of their liver. But really, the tests um, that we do will vary quite a lot depending on the particular patient. So it will depend on how severe your porphyria is or when you last had an attack. So for patients having lots of attacks, we do a lot more testing than for patients who don't have attacks. Um, and it will depend on your age. So some older patients have a higher risk of some complications that we would want to test to, to look at. Um, and it will depend really on what treatments you're on already for your porphyria and whether those treatments require some monitoring. Um, so there's quite a bit of um, there's quite a bit of variation, really. There's no no one set of tests that is right for everybody. Okay, that's helpful. And the PBG test is something that often causes confusion about how to interpret that. Is that something yeah, that's right. So, so PBG is um, a rough marker. So, it's a PBG is a is a porphyrobilinogen. It's a chemical that's measured in the urine of patients with porphyria, and it's a rough marker of how active your porphyria is. But the the results are quite difficult to interpret. So, um, urine porphyrobilinogen, the concentration of PBG, I'll call it, in the urine, is always raised if you're having an acute attack. And it will be quite significantly raised, so at least 10 times higher than it is in normal in people who haven't got porphyria. Um, and so the number, the, 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 the number that you, you may be given will be sort of at least 15 or 20, but often very, very much higher in an attack. So the PBG will be very high. Um, and for some patients with acute porphyria, so with people who have varig porphyria or hereditary coproporphyria, the urine PBG goes up in an attack and then it falls back again to normal when the attack has got better. And so for people with varig porphyria or hereditary coproporphyria, the urine PBG is a very good marker of whether they're having an attack or not. Now, in acute intermittent porphyria, in AIP, it's a different situation the PBG is much more difficult to interpret. Um, and the reason for that is that the PBG goes up in an attack, but it will then stay up. It will nearly always stay up after that attack and remain high for, for a long, long time, often for many, many years, um, even if you never have another attack. And in some people with, with AIP, the PBG remains as, is high all the time and they've never had an attack. So, so this means that a high PBG in somebody with AIP does not necessarily mean that they were having an attack at that time. No, it's, just, it's quite complicated, isn't it? It just means that their porphyria is active somewhere. It's biochemically active. And I think it's reasonable to say that somebody with a high PBG is at higher risk of having a future yes. attack than somebody who's got a normal PBG. Um, but if you're trying to decide if someone's having an attack at the time or not, then it's only really a useful test for very good porphyria and hereditary copra porphyria. Okay. And what about those people that have quite low PBG, but they might still be in pain? What could that be due to? Yeah, that's right. Well, if the PBG is normal or, or quite low, just a little bit raised, then it, it does mean that at the time that sample was taken, the person was not having a porphyria attack. Um, but it, obviously, if they've got symptoms, then in, then those it, it probably means those symptoms need to be thoroughly investigated because something else is causing them. So it may be something that's not related to the porphyria at all. Um, sometimes, though, in people who've had porphyria for a long time and have had attacks, you know, many many years ago, the the urine PBG can fall back down to normal because the PBGs not active anymore but there is still pain from from um sort of chronic pain from sort of damage to the nerves that happened during attacks maybe many years ago so some people with porphyria may experience um chronic pain 
due to nerve damage um, and, and the, but, but the porphyria isn't active anymore and the PVG is actually normal. Well, that's really helpful, thank you.